Hello again. Today I'm going to give you an instructional video on how to wire up um, Pico Electrofrog points for use with DCC. Now, in front of me I've got two medium radius Pico um, turnouts and um, they've just come off my layout at um, Dean Park Station because I'm replacing them with two long um, turnouts. The reason for this was that when trains went across the tracks the carriages rubbed against the platform, the mock platform that I'd made up. So I'm hoping by using a, a, a longer curved point, such as the one I'll show you here, which is the long one, you can see the difference in length there, the train will have a smoother transition into, into the other long point and then alleviate the problem of platform rub. So these are the points that I've ripped up today. I can reuse them. Always be careful when you're ripping up track work that you don't damage it. It comes out the box like this. If I turn it over, you will see that it has a wire here, a very um, fragile wire, so watch what you're doing, that's important. And it's also got these joins here. These must be removed for DCC. Just take a pair of pliers to them and pull them out. Okay, that has to be broken. These here should be linked, that to that and that one linked to that one. This gives better running, um, especially if the blade contact on the other side gets dirty. Now it does say on the instruction manual that you get with the Pico points, and it's worth taking a, a few hours to just kind of get your head around these if you're new to um, laying points for DCC with a mind to putting turnout motors on it. It does, um, it does tell you these have to be broken and um, beneficial to, to obviously join, not in this diagram, but in the point here, join these two, a small wire there and a small wire there. And I'll show you in a minute. Now if you turn the point back over, watch not to break this fragile wire here, that's going to come in very handy. There it is, supplied out of the box. This was £10 from Hatton's. Um, had it on back order since before Christmas. It, check it works very well, obviously, before you, you put it on the layout. Um, you have to wire it up as per the diagram for use with DCC with a PL13 or PL15 accessory switch. I've got the PL13, which I'll show you um, how to fit together with the point motor. So in all true Blue Peter style, I'm going to get rid of that one and show you how the point is now prepared for DCC. As you can see it's got three wires coming from it. This is the positive rail so I've, I've soldered a red wire which will go to the point motor accessory switch and a black wire. Now these have been actually soldered to the fish plates. It does it recommend you do that in the Pico instructions. That saves a lot of hassle, you can actually do that separately. I have a wee dose, uh, supply of these if you like, kind of stashed up and every time I fit a new point I just go and get myself because the wire is always the same length to get to the accessory switch. The blue one comes from this wire here. I've just snipped it and soldered it and that comes back to the accessory switch and that's for switching the uh, frog polarity which again is essential for using DCC to avoid shorts. Okay, so as you can see here I have joined these. I actually take the excess wire from here lay it across, solder it four times, then snip in the middle. And as you can see there, that's not bad. Check it with a, a knife that it's, it's um, you know, not loose. Just check it with the blade of a knife. I have removed those as per instructions. And I've also, if I turn it back over, fitted insulated uh, fish plates there, there and there. Now, if you've got points, as I am in this case, facing each other, okay, it is required to break those two links. Okay, um, I, I just do that for safety, it's a stop shorts, and um, that's, I found the best way for doing it. If you've just got, you know, a, a branch line branching off, you do not need that one. Okay, but this is, if you're having points facing each other, as, as per the instructions, and again in the Pico, you need them there and there, and you always need them at the frog anyway. Okay, so there we go. So we've got our point, it's prepared for DCC. Now the motor I'm using is a um, PL10E extended pin, which gets right through my baseboard, which is 9mm thick ply. Um, the accessory switch goes onto that, and if you're mounting it under the baseboard, you need a 
a mounting plate. You buy these in packs of five with supplied with screws and um, these simply fit on underneath and you bend over the, the links there so it doesn't come out. So that's that set ready to, to be put under. I drill a 10mm, 10.5mm hole underneath where this is going to be. I set it at the mid position, hold it hold it in place with a couple of thin bits of card. I put a pencil mark, remove it, drill the hole and then when I line the, the motor underneath I make sure that there's free movement before I start screwing or, or putting anything in, in place. The accessory switch, I'm working one handed here, there is a hole that slides back and forward there, that's the switch. Okay, this goes to the blue and that and that is the plus and minus. Usually in my case the end one here is the positive and that's the minus or in my case black wire. So I put it on, you make sure that this hole goes into that um, stock and it presses on. Now this is an old accessory switch so hopefully I will press it on and there it goes. Now you get held it in place with a bit of araldite or a bit of epoxy resin don't use PVA, it's not good for plastics and metal so it's not designed for that and as the, as the point switches it changes the polarity so you don't get shorts. It took me a while to get my head around this um, little switch until I actually broke one open and, and I kind of found out how simple it is. It just changes from this to this depending on which way you slide it and there's a, a, copper, a copper plate under there. You don't really have to understand the ins and outs of it, as long as you follow the instructions then you will you'll avoid any shorts. So that goes under your baseboard as I said. Positive or negative depending on which way your points, you might have some, have some case when that's uh, flipped the other way but just be careful. Um, and that there is always the polarity uh, line which is coming from the frog. Okay, so that's how to wire that up. I um, I tend to put the point motor under the under the baseboard, check it's working without obviously DCC, and then after I'm happy, I go to work on the accessory switch, solder that into place, and then glue it underneath when I'm when I'm totally happy. I've got one done. Um, other parts of the layout, I don't know if you're able to see it very well. There's one there. As you can see, this is going to the frog. These two are coming from the fish plates and they go into the accessory switch terminals at the end there. In here. And you've also got your standard wires coming from your point motor which are separate. Which they go to the, the switch unit. In my case, I take them back round and they go into one of these uh, levers, that's a PL26R, you get, you get yellow, black and white, and that's ideal for working um, turnouts. PL13 is an accessory switch, PL10E, you get them in six packs for £25 I think it is from Hattons, I think they are 2 50 a piece. They are similar, um, I'll try and get the prices on the bottom of the screen and um, obviously you need your standard fish plate. Using Pico wire is an expensive way to go. Um, I worked out the other day there that it cost me £28 for 100 metres of this compared to £7.89 for 100 metres of the same wire from Rapid Electronics so I'm going to order some rolls of that being naive and new, and new to the hobby um, especially with wiring up points I just I just bought Pico you know to make sure it was all all standard stuff. I also use this for some hard to reach places, it's wiring looms and that just fits to your point motor. The um, the green ones will go there and then on the other side you'll have a black and a, and a red. And I say they'll go back to the um, the switch for switching it. That's nothing to do with the DCC part, that's just switching it but if you want DCC you've got to use an accessory switch which is I've got here. I hope that's cleared it up. Um, I watched two or three videos. Um, Everard Junction, he was using seep point motors with built-in accessory switch. He's got a good video on that. You might want to go to his link um, and you know have a look at the way he's done his seep point motors. Similar principle to this. He's you know soldering is required at some stage, and um, but if you do buy those wiring looms, it does cut down the soldering a bit. Expensive way to do it but it's, it's good for getting to hard to reach areas under the layout which you might need to alter later on. My flux is a water based flux 
um, and I use that instead of the thick paste. That's my lead free solder. Um, avoid the lead solder. Um, fumes aren't good for you, apparently. And um, always make sure you wipe that off with a wet sponge and dry it thoroughly with some kitchen towel. The cheaper the better. I think that was Aldi's. Um, because it does make the tracks go tarnished and green. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, that is one that when I first started, as you can see right in the middle there, it's kind of gone green and corroded. Yeah, you'll not see that when it's all weathered up, but it doesn't look particularly nice in the meantime. Okay, so just make sure you wipe. I suppose it's the same with any flux. Um, they're corrosive to a certain degree. Make sure you remove any, any flux. If there's any questions, drop us a line. Um, an email, post a comment and I'll try and get back to you. I see I've fathomed out how to do this after reading a lot a lot of magazines, um, watching other people's channels and I hope I've been able to answer a few queries for people who may be thinking about doing point motors. If you're laying track and you're thinking about doing point motors, I'd go down this route, getting it wired up um, from day one. If you've gone back to it um, having had track running already, you can always solder the black and red wires to the side of the rail and the blue wire into the frog there. Um, you know, it, there's, there's more, way, more, more than one way to do it. I've just done it this way because I knew from day one that I wanted uh, motorised turnouts. Thanks just now and hopefully I'll get this um, new section put in and have another video of trains running soon. Cheerio now, bye bye.